We're recording. There we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello. And a member of the Terran Empire, Muhammad mm. Noor. My name is Hi Husk, and we are celebrating Aaron Eisenberg. How are you guys doing? Welcome, Great. welcome. First Thank of all, for, for those of you that are listening and can't see, muhammad has got an awesome Terran Empire <laughs> banner behind him. The one uh, looks like it's from uh, Enterprise, or is it the one from uh, original series? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, the same symbol is used in both. I'm not sure which one this one's from. This was a gift for my kids for my uh, for Christmas last year. It's cool. Oh, wow. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself because you 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 are a professor. If that's not right. That's right. I'm a professor of biology. Uh, I teach classes here at Duke University. I do research on what are the genetic changes it takes to make new species. I do that using fruit flies, not using humans. Um, but I'm also a big, <laughs> big sci-fi nerd as well. And I've, I've always loved Star Trek since I was a little kid. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. That's really cool. And you said that you, uh, and by the way, professor at Duke University, which is very impressive, uh, at least to me, it sounds impressive. <laughs> yeah, it place. is impressive. It's 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 world known. We all yeah. know about Duke. Uh, we also have a famous basketball team yep. over there. So, Coach Shevsky, shout out to Coach Shevsky. He's the man. <laughs> He's the man. Yeah. So uh, it's a little too good that team. I don't know. What what got you into the sciences and and biology? What what sparked that curiosity for you? Well, I mean, my parents were engineers, so there was a little bit of a uh, push in that direction. But I just always liked biology as a kid. I remember even in seventh grade saying, I want to grow up and be a biologist. And largely, although there are a few hiccups in the course, I largely stayed the course headed there. So it's been really fun. I mean, one of my... You, one, you oh, paid attention when they were dissecting the frog. You were... You yeah. Were, you, <laughs> <laughs> we even did a cat in my high school. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I remember that frog day in school. I was like, wow, a frog? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, that's, so, so biology's always been something since you were a kid that you were interested in, and, and it was a natural progression for you. Exactly, exactly. And now you said you, you actually go and do talks. Uh, tell that's us right. about the talks that you do, and you're going to be doing one at the uh, Star Trek cruise in March, right? That's right. That's right. So I do talks on biology behind popular science fiction, TV, and movies, sometimes with other people like my colleague Eric Spana, who's a professor here at Duke University, or astrophysicist Aaron McDonald, who's also spoken at Star Trek Las Vegas and is also speaking on the cruise, as you mentioned. But, you know, Different kinds of talks. I mean, one I do often is, why are there so many humanoid species in Star Trek? You know, obviously a big question. But I try to teach evolutionary concepts using examples from Star Trek and, and then use science fiction or Star Trek in particular as a way to explore hypotheses. You know, basically, mm -hmm. let's, let's see what we see here and then use real science and figure out how could that be true or, or is it completely impossible? It's more fun to try to figure out a way that thing is possible than to just throw stones at it. And I actually do that in classes here at Duke University too. And do you find that a lot of stuff that is um, hypothetical in Star Trek that is, is, is possible? <laughs> Is it, do we have smart people working on our team? <laughs> so it's clear that <laughs> unlike a, a lot of question, it is a dangerous uh, question. Uh, uh, unlike uh, a lot of science fiction, Star Trek clearly tries to be scientifically accurate. And I know they use science advisors for things. They consult with people. Andre Bormanis, I think, uh, advised for your series, Sirach, uh, where you know he, basically they no would idea. come to him with a question and say, like, "Well, we have this." How could we make this sound reasonable? So I, I think mm -hmm. they still do that with current series as well. Mm -hmm. And that's really nice that they, that they try to make it accurate instead of just saying, well, we'll just call it the force and make whatever happens happens, for example. Right. <laughs> so, uh, well, you heard it here first. Mohammed Noor, a professor at Duke University, says science crystal or uh, time crystals are totally legit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we're all over those. <laughs> totally legit, right? Actually, I think Dr. McDonald had a piece of her talk on that. I, I, I wouldn't try to speak and explain how it worked, but she had some way using space time and that maybe that could kind of work. <laughs> I work, uh, I focus on the biology, physics, so that's outside my specialty. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a good point that you made that like, they don't necessarily say, hey, you know, let's, what what can we do that sounds real? They say, here's something we want to do. How can we make that exactly. sound feasible? Exactly. And that, that's a good way exactly. to approach it. Uh, and you're right about the force. Come on. This, that's, why they, <laughs> that's why they call it science fantasy, not science yeah, fantasy. Those absolutely. guys. So you're reverse engineering from the, from, the, the, from the destination to from where we are currently today in our mm -hmm. technology and capabilities. Exactly. That's a great way of putting it. I'm going to use that quote from now on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If I can help anyway. <laughs> well, so 
did you start watching with the original series or did you start okay you did I did. It was reruns. I wasn't, I wasn't born when the original series aired, but I was definitely started watching when the original series was in reruns in the seventies. So, mm-hmm. and, you know, this was like when I was a little kid, I remember seeing the first episode on a family trip someplace and thinking, what is this? <laughs> I want to right. see more of this. I remember going to the original movie and not being that excited, but then getting a lot more excited with uh, wrath of Khan. And that I remember in, in high school being so excited about uh, next generation coming back. Like, wow, there's going to be more star Trek. And then, wow, that led to this universe of star Trek after that. So, Mm-hmm. That was fantastic. So, so when you're watching a show, are you are you looking at it and just observing it from a casual observer and saying, okay, great story, this is great? Or are you looking at it and saying, well, you know, let's see about the possibility of this species and the, the evolution of it. How do you, what is the lens you're looking at it from? That's a great question. I mean, obviously it's fiction as I'm watching it and I'm, I'm watching for entertainment. So I'm not looking to try to nitpick, though when something's really blatant, I'll say like the CW shows, man, my son even jokes about them. They don't, they don't even try like Flash and Arrow. They say stuff like, what, <laughs> what is happening here? Right. But if there's there's if no science behind what they're no. saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. But no, I mean, as long as there's some vague attempt, you know, oh, that couldn't happen. Then eh, it's okay. I, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm open to a good story because you know, again, it's not it's not a class. I mean, it's it's entertainment, mm-hmm. so it's all good. <laughs> Storytelling is the key. Yeah, you're right. It is. I, I met you in in Las Vegas, and actually, yeah. Aaron introduced us. That's right. Um, to tell us about your relationship with Aaron and kind of conversations you might have had with him. Sure. So uh, I met Aaron. Well, actually, I met Aaron the very first time in Star Trek Las Vegas in 2016. Now, he probably wouldn't remember that because I, I didn't really have an interaction with him. It was just a quick photo op. But at the time, I was dressed as, um, what's the name of the guy who, who had the tribbles in the original series episode? Harry um, Mudd? No, not Harry Mudd. Um, oh, oh, the the guy before. Yeah, okay, I got you. I, I can't remember his name right off the bat, but I was dressed as him and I had some tribbles. And, what I, and with that one, Max and Aaron were in costume as Ferengi. So what I did is I, I set up this thing with my son where it looked like I was selling uh, Max as, as um, Rom a tribble. And Aaron and my son were both sitting there in the background shaking their heads. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a copy of that picture, um, Ryan? Can you share that? Uh, no, I'm actually, I'm trying to remember what the character was that that brought the triples on because now <laughs> i feel i feel Cyrano stumped. jones Cyrano <laughs> okay, jones and, and, yeah, i okay. know that there's like 50 star trek nerds right now going don't you know come on <laughs> Cyrano, well i should because i dressed up as him but that was my first interaction with him just in passing the first time i really talked with him was actually on a podcast this was one of the alpha quadrant po- podcasts mm-hmm. yeah this mm-hmm. was with um aaron and i'm sorry with um garrett and evil dick and mm-hmm. aaron and we were talking about a discovery episode. I remember we had a great chat even before the podcast started. We had a great time during the podcast. I think, gosh, I think the recording was like two and a half hours. It was some really long time of, of just chatting. And I was like, wow, this guy is hilarious. I remember one of the funniest things he said, we actually were talking about the mirror universe because this was referring to one of the um, discovery episodes where they were in the mirror universe. And he was saying like, what would all of us look like in a mirror universe? As you, know, as you guys can see, I have a bald spot in the middle. And Aaron was like, you'd have a giant mohawk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. But that, that was my first real sort of substantive interaction with him. Um, mm. Shortly after that, I remember... I was kind of floored because shortly after we had a good interaction, but I went on to Twitter and he actually had followed me. I was like, Whoa, <laughs> I felt very honored. Like, you know, I'm just this random guy and here's this movie star and he's following me on Twitter. So I of course followed him back immediately and we interacted a fair bit on Twitter. So that was really fun. Um, we got to talk more at the Northeast Trek con. This was, mm-hmm. in, um, I think it was late 2018, I believe it was. And you know, we actually, we tentatively had a plan that we were going to potentially go together up to see the um, the Star Trek Museum, which is in Ticonderoga, New York. Sure, but sure. Uh, yeah. Jake Pauly's thing, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I shot him I shot him some notes on Twitter saying, like, would you be interested in going because I want to go see this? He's like, actually, I would be interested in doing that, which I was like, wow, that would be fantastic. But unfortunately, the timing of his flights didn't uh, coincide. But we mm. ended up just chatting a lot there at the convention and stuff. So that, you know, it was funny just how quickly it suddenly felt like I've known this guy forever. He's my friend, even though – if you really look at, you know, how recently I met him, it was, it was very recently, but we just clicked so well. And he was just such a funny guy all the time. 
I loved also in following his social media, I really loved referring back to the science part. He was a big advocate for science. He was always posting stuff about the importance of understanding climate change and things like that in, in his, uh, his post and other sort of pro-science things. And I really respected that. And it's nice because he has, he has a broader audience than I do. So him doing that really meant a lot to me. And I really appreciate that. But it was always just super nice. And then also at Star Trek Las Vegas, as Sirach mentioned, uh, we had, I stopped by his table almost any time I went by. I was like, let me go talk to Aaron some more because he's just so fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sirach, have, uh, have we heard that story before where somebody says within, within five minutes of meeting him, we kind of felt like we had known each other forever, right? He was just that kind of guy. That's the kind of guy he was. And it, 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 was, it was almost like, you know, there's certain jokes that you, only your friends tell, you know, play on you, people that are close to you. Uh, and those were the jokes that Aaron went for right away. And, <laughs> and so you were like, Man, he, he, you know, he's like my buddy because he's saying the stuff that only my best friends would say to me. Right. You know, and, and he would poke fun, but like in this very harmless way, well, you never felt like he was trying to you know, demean you or tear oh, you gosh, down. No, no oh, gosh, it was no. always playful. It was always fun. It was always a mutual laughing thing. He wasn't laughing yeah. at you. He was laughing with you. Yeah, uh, or, or definitely. trying to make you laugh. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and, unless and you weren't laughing, then oh well. <laughs> <laughs> then oh well. They, he, was, somebody, uh, <laughs> he was careful too, because I remember joking about something and then saying, saying I won't say who it was, but I was saying, oh, I'm going to go tell so and so over there about that. He's like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it, was oh, nice. it was nice that he didn't want, he didn't want to like offend this other person. Yeah, I don't want to figure anybody. out who this is. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we, we, I can figure out who it is. Uh, I can narrow it down to like four people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I pretty, I've got it. I know who it is, uh, but we won't say. That but uh, but, that, but that is Aaron's uh, motif right there. He didn't want to be offensive. Like exactly. he was very, I really very that. cautious about being offensive, you yep. know? Yep. And if he thought he offended you, then he would definitely double back and say, hey, look, I said this and we talked about this and yeah. I, I, I don't know if you took it this way. Yeah. You know what really he nice. would do? Oh, he, sorry. Would, he would beat you to within an inch of your, your <laughs> patient's life. Like he would, he would know where's the level I can push this guy? And he would go, yeah. I'm going to push to right there. But I'm going to make sure, I, I don't want to yeah. offend him, but I want to know just how far I can go, you know? That's yeah. right. So, That's right. Yeah, so Sirach and I took the brunt of a lot of <laughs> yeah, well, I saw, it. Was, I've been watching Seventh yeah. Rule from the beginning and I've been watching you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome, awesome. <laughs> hey, tell us about that book that you wrote. I, I want to know about that. Oh, sure. Let me grab it. It's right over here. This is called uh, Live Long and Evolve. Is it showing up on the screen? Yeah, there you go. Live Long yeah. and Evolve. Uh, what Star Trek can teach us about evolution, genetics, and life on other worlds. So wow. this basically is the introductory biology course that I teach at Duke in terms of the substance. You know, I talk about what is natural selection, what is DNA, how does it work, how do new species form, what, why do we have uh, different sexes, things like that. But I just broke it down using examples from Star Trek episodes. This was so much fun to write, but it was also wow. so scary because I had to make sure I had to make sure I got the science right, of course, right. But that's actually I know the science really well. But I had to make sure that I got the Trek absolutely right, because as you can imagine, <laughs> yeah, Trekkies yeah. are sometimes a little bit picky. <laughs> yeah, more so than scientists in some ways, right? In some oh, ways, yeah. yeah. Scientists are pretty darn picky too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have a question for you because you sure. interact with a lot of students, and you probably yeah. get to uh, get more feedback than than the average person. What are what is the reaction from your students when you bring up Star Trek uh, to them and science? It, do you get do you get positive, negative? What's the what's the ratio there? That's a great question. So most of them don't. I mean, most of them have heard of Star Trek, but if you ask them what do you know about Star Trek, it's very often, at least among the undergraduates here, it's very often the reboot movies. That's what they know really well. Like a lot of them have seen the Chris Pine movies, things like that. So I taught a really? class last semester actually using this book. This was a freshman seminar. It was just titled Genetics Evolution Star Trek. <laughs> and oh, wow. Yeah, literally half the people who signed up had never seen any Star Trek. <laughs> but they just thought, what the heck? I'll try it out. Right, right. So in the class, we'd watch episodes from all the different series. Like we watched some Enterprise. We, of course, watched Deep Space Nine. We watched the uh, you know, original series. We watched Discovery, things like that. And a lot of them had not seen any of it. And they're like, wow, this is really interesting. And honestly, I think all of them by the end had really gotten into it. Actually, I, I polled them ahead of time at the beginning and then uh, afterwards. 
Um, and one of the questions I asked is, how much biology did you have? This was a non-majors biology class. And most of them ha didn't have much biology. And I asked, how, much, right. how, how likely are you to take more biology? And a much larger fraction said they wanted to take more. But I asked them also about Star Trek. How likely are you to watch more Star Trek? And the majority of the class said, I want to watch more. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. All right. So you're turning on new fans every day. That's right. As well as new <laughs> biologists. So there's yeah, a right. of, there are a lot of people right yeah. now that are really down on, on the future of humanity and on how children are growing up, you know, and, and they're – you know, not growing up the right way or colleges are doing certain things. I think Muhammad here is like 180 degrees different of that. Like he's teaching kids to love Star Trek and not just love it for the storytelling and for the cool aliens and stuff like this guy, but actually the smart minds of the world and educating them in how cool and progressive and, and important Star Trek is. I think that's pretty much the best thing that I've almost ever heard i mean we're, we're sitting here doing podcasts and making movies but you're actually you know making a difference in this world i think it's amazing Aww. They're very good. Yeah. One, actually, so they pick up on exactly the point that you said, and that a lot of them pick up on the ethical aspects of the episodes. And mm -hmm. often, even though the class was focused on the biological aspects, we ended up talking about the ethical and moral uh, and political sometimes implications from the various things. So it was, it was really, really fun to talk with them. And all these undergrads are they're brilliant. They're much smarter than I was ever. <laughs> so it was really <laughs> no. fun seeing the way they they uh, react to the episodes and the insights they come away with from things. So that was really fun. And also we got we got some people to um, participate in the class. So Andre Bormanis, the person I mentioned, the science advisor, he skyped in for the very first class cool. and talked to the students about like how does science advising actually work. Mm -hmm. And they were really into that. Then we also had um, Jane Brooke, who plays Admiral Cornwell in Star sure. Trek Discovery. Yeah. She's a Duke alumna. So she actually came Ooh. to visit the class one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. You, you know, I was going to say, because when you talked about ethics and biology, the first thing that popped up in my head was um, the controversy behind cloning. Yes. That, that, that really yes. started. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something that you cover in, in your class and, and talk about um, as far as it's, the ethics as well? A little bit. I mean, the class is very focused on specifically the biology part. I certainly bring it up on the side, but it's it's more focused on the biology side. But definitely, when you look at cloning, I mean, we could almost make our own Jim Hadar now. <laughs> not right, quite, right. Yeah. but you know, let's it's try. getting close to that. Right. <laughs> so let's not. I'll provide well, the Ketracel white. Yeah. Well, once we see dinosaurs start uh, Jurassic oh, parking man. their way back into the society, that's, <laughs> yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. Didn't work out well in the movie. Um, but the other question I had for you, you mentioned watching episodes mm -hmm. and, and talking about them. Can you give us an example of an episode and what you would probably highlight? Uh, like Sure. Yeah. So one, actually, so one I did, this wasn't in the class I just mentioned, but in a different class, one I did was um, Voyage, the Voyager episode, Favorite Son. So this was one focused on Harry Kim, so that's Garrett. Um, and there was a lot of genetics that came up in that. So I don't know if you remember the, the way that episode flowed. Uh, he... He started eliciting these behaviors that came out of sort of nowhere, and he, he got drawn to go to this particular planet, and then he was convinced that he was this alien. I think they called it a Teresian or something like that, mm -hmm. but it turned out all the women there on the planet, there's there a planet of like almost all women, but then they were like, they were somehow preying on the men. <laughs> so, oh, sounds okay. terrible. so we picked up there was a lot of things in terms terrible. of yeah oh yeah <laughs> ryan <laughs> sign ryan up for that one <laughs> they're like let's make it a 15 part episode <laughs> <laughs> actually Can garrett <laughs> garrett visited the class when we did that one too and surprised oh, wow. the students so that was oh, really oh, nice okay. too <laughs> yeah but um that one was interesting because there's a lot of genetics in the context of how did how did Harry Kim get these Teresian genes? Because they said he has these Teresian genes. So we talked about like how can you get horizontal gene transfer? How can you get like a bit of DNA that was not that you weren't born with into your body? So we talked about that. We talked about the various behaviorist things in terms of what behaviors are are you know encoded in your DNA versus what are things that are learned. But there's a lot of little pieces Ooh. that came from it. It's not so much the main plot, but it's the things that are happening on the side that, that we tend to focus on. The plots don't usually they're not usually that biological. The plots are much more much more commonly um, ethical implications, things like that. But we can pick right. up a lot of biology from the pieces. You extrapolate from that and, and start to build on these other topics exactly. that you're talking about. Well said. Wow. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's it. fun. This is so good. You know, uh, we're just about out of time, but I think it's safe to say we'd love to have you back uh, because there's so much more to talk about. I'd love uh, to come back. Before we yeah. go, thank you. And we mentioned to him off the air how much we loved his voice, and he sounds like a DJ. I mean, he's got the perfect voice for this stuff. He does. He's great for this. He's, he's a pro. Yeah, but oh, uh, one, one question I do want to ask before we go, 
is about Aaron. If you have any, any insights or final thoughts or memories of him, um, that maybe not a lot of people would know, or just to reiterate something that we've already discussed in the past, or you've heard about him. I think really for him, it's just the way he brought happiness to anybody. Like I would see as I'd walk by, not just my own direct interactions, but you know, also those, but just anybody who'd walk by his table, you'd be like, Hey, <laughs> he'd like strike up this conversation and you'd always have something interesting to talk about. He'd always be really genuinely interested in you and want to know more about you and ask all these great questions that he'd have, you know, great funny comments and he'd connect in such a wonderful way. And I saw this also meeting Melissa too. Melissa was fantastic too. And mm, you could yes. see that how, how well they, they gelled together. It was, yeah. just, it was just always so lovely to interact with him and even just to watch him interact with other people. I sometimes, you know, this sounds a little embarrassing. I sometimes like stand off on the side and just watch him interact with everybody. Like, wow, he's really cool. <laughs> yeah. What's embarrassing about stalking? <laughs> yeah, we all watched him from a distance. That's the safest place to watch. <laughs> Out of arm's reach. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thanks very much, Mohammed. This has been My an pleasure. absolute pleasure. Uh, the yeah, time goes by too. very quickly with you because you've got so many cool things to say. And we feel like we're students all of a sudden. We're like, tell us more, professor. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like one of those classes that you're just happy to sign up for. I remember my, my own college days and reading through the syllabus and finding the, the list of schedule of classes and, and reading the titles and saying, all right, do I want to do that? Is that going to be interesting? Do I want to do that? Is that going to be interesting? And I can only imagine going through and seeing uh, biology and Star Trek. I'm like, yeah, yeah. sign me up. I'm sure, sure yeah. I'm going to get an A in there. I, got, I already got background information. You know? I've yeah. got to know this. I've got to know this. If you got anything but an A, that would be totally I've on you. I gotta know this stuff. <laughs> gotta know it somehow, either by osmosis or something. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much, Mom. We really My appreciate pleasure. the conversation and uh, keep Me the too. good up, the good work that you're doing you over too. there at uh, Duke, man. So you know, shout out to our guys over there and our friends in college. Thanks. Mm. All right, everybody. That's Mohammed Noor making the world a better place for us <laughs> for when we get old. The people that Mohammed is currently teaching will take pretty good care of us, I think. Thanks, yeah. Mohammed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for, for having me. Home, always remember the seventh rule. <laughs>